good evening one and all present here we will be waiting for five more minutes because all the participants have not come yet Good evening to all. I feel great joy and privilege to welcome you all. I am Lukman and I shall be the moderator for today's event. I extend my warm welcome to all present here. I am glad that we all have assembled under the banner of Maxell Alumni, which is the official association of Maxell Leadership Council, an initiative of IIT, IIM. faculty and alumni chaired under the leadership of professor dr ashraf rizvi the main objectives of a association is to promote close relation between the maxel leadership council which is striving hard towards the upliftment of the weaker sections through educational interventions maxel alumni conduct several webinars and programs for the benefit of all and kids debate is one such initiative let me brief about today's proceeding of today's event kids debate the topic for today's kids debate is school examinations 
should be redesigned to be online during the pandemic and beyond. Due to the recent developments in the field of education, it is advisable to restructure the school examinations to be online during the pandemic, a situation that forces people to stay home and beyond. Rules that will be followed for this debate session are as follows. Each team comprises of five members, one for the motion and the other against the motion. Total speaking time allotted is three minutes plus two minutes, which is five minutes. Three minutes for the main speech and two minutes for the participants rebuttal. Speakers who will speak below two minutes will be disqualified. The two minute rebuttal will be based on one minute The, one, uh, the two minute rebuttal will be based on one minute for asking the question and the other minute for answering the question asked. And at the end of the program, the chief judge will be announcing the best speaker and the best team. We have two teams eagerly waiting for the debate to start. Team affirmative with the logo lion. Now, I call the team leader, Master Talha Rafi, from Team Lion to brief us about his team logo. Over to Talha Rafi. So actually, Lion are the symbol of courage and power. Lion are also the symbol of royalty. Lion are unique among cats. Is in that they live in a group or pride. Lions are organized hunters with great strength, strategies, and skills. Lions are the kings of the jungle because of their... Am I eligible? Yes, please go ahead. So, let me begin once again. Lions are the symbols of courage and power. Lions are also symbol of royalty. Lions are unique cats that live in group or pride. Lion are organized hunters with great strength, power, and skills. And lions are the called jungle kings because of their raw power. And lions uh, have a great strength. Lions fear no other animals. And lions have men to shield them himself. So this represents our team, lion. Thank you, Talha Rafi. The members of Team Lion include Speaker 1, Rafa Asif, topic during pandemic. Speaker 2, Mariam, topic beyond pandemic. Speaker 3, Unaisa, evolution from book to screen. Speaker 4, Imad, topic ease and advantages. And Speaker 5, Talha Rafi, topic benefits of new normal. and the team opposition with the logo Eagle. Now, I call the team leader, Master Mohammed Hafi from Team Eagle to brief us about his team logo. We chose the majestic Eagle as our logo as it represents clear vision, success, intelligence, courage, and victory. These are all very important things we need to have to win a debate. Clear vision allows us to hone in on what we stand for. Intelligence is needed to rebut our op opponent effectively. Courage is needed to stand up to our opponents. Success gives us motivation to move forward. And victory is what we achieve from all our efforts we, uh, we put in. Thank you, Mohammed Hafi. The members of Team Eagle include Speaker 1, Zahid, Topic, Distractors and Time Management. Speaker 2, Hiba, Infrastructures. Speaker 3, Umama, Difficulties of Technology. Speaker 4, Mohammed, Topic, Having Negative Impact on Students' Tactile Skills. And Speaker 5, 
happy topic cheating in exams now let me introduce our chief guest miss anu thomas abraham she is ba in english literature ma in english literature bachelor of education and certified kata debate coach and judge she has worked at bombay scottish mumbai cambridge international school qatar and is currently working at olive international school qatar welcome aboard ma'am we are lucky to have you with us as chief guest without much ado let us start the debate session from the team lion we have the first speaker as rafa asif who will be speaking on during pandemic over to rafa asif the screen is yours good evening everyone i rafa asif is representing as speaker number 1 i'd like to share my opinion on online exams during a period where in person co contact comes with many risks online exams are a great way of maintaining momentum in higher education and to ensure the learning process doesn't ground to a halt there are also several arguments that suggest that online exams will remain a key feature of the higher education experience even after the worst of corona of the corona virus crisis has subsided part b of my opinions according to si news the process of marking in person examinations is expensive and highly ineffective considering the cost of the assessor and the extensive manual data entry which is subject to human error other benefits include a significant reduction in the paper used and time required to conduct and mark the exams thank you everyone now from team eagle we have first speaker zahid he will be speaking on distractors and time management over to zahid the screen is yours hi i'm zahid i support school exams should be obtained from in person during pandemic pandemic and beyond because there are there are um a lot of problems faced during online exams one of them is distraction timing in any type of exam let it be online or in person two major there are two major points one concentration two time management in online it is very difficult to maintain maintain both when we write exam online there are more distractors than usual especially with your family and your younger siblings around so there will be lack of concentration and time management is one more challenge task in this circumstance stay motivated in online exam we when we see people surrounding by us doing the same task we get motivated and do work with more interest and concentration so staying motivated is is also very important in online exam time management is a major task in online exams um, and one of the biggest issues that that impacts impacts online exam lack of schedule to many distractions can lead to a poor time management another factor is lack of this designed workspace is also plays a very important role during online exam so finally during online exam it is very difficult to maintain concentration concentration in 
getting motivated and also time management is very important. Staying away from all such type of distractors are very difficult. So I, I strongly support exams should be considered in person to get a hundred percent result and outcome. Mm -hmm. Now, from Team Lion, we have our second speaker, Mariam, and she will be speaking on Beyond Pandemic. Over to Mariam, the screen is yours. Greetings, judges, all MA members, and to my fellow participants. I am Mariam Sardar, speaker number two, and today I'm going to talk about Beyond Pandemic. First, convenience. The first obvious advantage of online examination is the sheer convenience factor as it allows students or teachers to conduct and take exams from any location of their choice. It saves us as neither students nor teacher required to travel to a physical location for the examination. Second, flexibility. Another advantage of online exam is the students have greater flexibility in choosing when the best time to conduct exam is. And also you can set up an exam in such a way that it will autograde itself. All you need is an internet connection and a computer or a smartphone to conduct your examination. Third, reduces cost. The cost of the examiner and the student who is giving the exam is reduced. The cost of the paper and ink and less paper printing. It also saves trees. Two, it reduces almost the half of the traditional method. The transportation cost of reaching the center for both examiner and student gets eliminated. Third, improve time management skills. In online examinations, the timer runs above or below, which reminds the student to complete the exam within the time bound. An online exam, it's quicker to mark and issue results. It helps students in improving their time management skills and to be punctual at time. Thank you. Now we have our second speaker from Team Eagle, Hiba, and she will be speaking on infrastructures. Over to Hiba, the screen is yours. Hello everyone, my name is Hiba and I'm speaker number two from the opposition team. One of the major reasons why I believe school examinations should not be taken online during the pandemic and beyond is because of infrastructure barriers. More specifically due to the lack of resources such as technology, electricity or a strong internet connection to take the examinations online. Now we all know that not everyone is fortunate enough like us. Not everyone is fortunate enough to have access to Wi-Fi or technology or even the basic necessity like electricity. This is especially prevalent in third world countries um, like India, for example, where 45.7% of the people do not have access to internet, which is nearly 700 million people in India. So in countries like these, it is very difficult to have these resources. Furthermore, recently, some schools required to have two technologies, um, one to monitor what the students are doing and another for them to access the exam. Thus, even if the student is fortunate enough to be able to afford one of the technologies, such as a computer, um, they, might not have, they might not have another one to facilitate the full requirements for sitting the online exam. Additionally, even when students do not have access or Additionally, when students have access to all of these basic things, most are vulnerable to having bandwidth problems. For example, if they have five other family members in their family who are also sitting, who are also attending their work or school online at the same time, this will inevitably cause them to have logging problems, lagging problems when taking the exam. So can you imagine your exam time ticking down as you wait for your questions to load? It's not ideal, as you can see. 
This is another reason why online exams cannot be taken to proceed in long term, because then it can negatively affect how future exams are taken and, and the students' performance in them. And it would not provide an accurate representation of how the students um, perform and what they can and, and, and did achieve. Although it can be adjusted to work as a temporary fix, it certainly cannot be installed permanently. So thus to conclude, I believe that this is the reason why school examinations should not be redesigned to be taken online permanently um, due to people not having access to internet connection or the basic proper tools to set the exams. Thank you and I will now hand the mic over to my next speaker. Now, our third speaker from Team Lion is Onaisa, and she will be speaking on evolution from book to screen. Over to Onaisa, the screen is yours. Hello, good evening to all. I'm Onaisa Mahmoud, speaker three from the affirmative side, and I'm going to divide my speech evolution into three parts. Part A, evolution. Part B, evolution in education. Part C, evolution, advantages of evolution. To be begin with part A, that is about evolution. This timeline of evolutionary history of life represents the current scientific theory outlining major events during the development of life on the planet Earth. Part B, that is about evolution in education. Schools that invested in digital technology are proving to be more agile and resilient during COVID-19. The education system has made a significant shift during the current pandemic and may never return to what it was once. Higher education has gone through tremendous change during the COVID-19 pandemic. In the face of uncertainty, it's become evident that institutions with prior investments in digital technology are emerging more agile and resilient. For example, online communities have helped 30% of students to communicate with each uh, with community other students during this time. The pandemic has also forced university to bring the exams online. This is just one step along the road to a new examination system. However, we can expect a new model of exams once COVID-19 has passed. Pandemic that has shattered economies around the world has also battered education systems and evolution of students through exams in developing and developed countries. Some 1.5 billion students, close to 90% of all primary, secondary, and third base learners in the world, are no longer able to go physically to school and give their exams for their future. Coming to the final part, that is part C about advantages, the impact has been dramatic and transformative as educators scramble to put in place workable short-term solutions, while each level of education faces its unique challenges. It is higher examination segment that may end up by necessity triggering examination revolution. Right now, video conferencing apps like Zoom and Waymax are throwing university a lifeline which is helping the students to get into the new digital era. I would like to conclude by saying that our exams should be conducted online because the the, uh, the there is an evolution in our world and the evolution in bringing new technologies to our world and to be uh, in the state to be to give online errors exams are a part of new technology thank you now we have our third speaker from team eagle umama and she will be speaking on difficulties of technology. Over to Umama, the screen is yours. Good evening, everyone. I'm the third speaker from the opposition team. Today, I will be focusing on the impact of writing an exam at home. Firstly, the distracting environment while writing an exam online. Many students live with big families and others may share a room. Either way, there is a lot of disturbance to the mind of the students while in an exam. You need to have full concentration and dedication to finish an exam on time, despite the other problems at home. 
but that is not possible when you're surrounded by noises and disturbances. Students will keep getting distracted and lose their focus, due to which their minds will switch to the idea of copying and cheating, which will further affect on their studies and their career. When you write an exam at home, you feel relaxed and calm. Students in many cases do not feel the need to stay prepared the night before and will wake up late and lose time. Disturbances, for example, there may be construction going on nearby or the phones may keep ringing or the electricity could go off or the neighbors might be very noisy. It is quite clear that there's a lot of difficulties while writing an exam at home. Secondly, lack of motivation for studying. As we all know, when exams are to be held online, students do not study as hard as they used to. Nowadays, they mostly rely on cheating due to which their motivation for studying declines they will start to feel unproductive and lazy. They start taking shortcuts to every problem. They start postponing their work and their concentration level also decreases. When a person reads for at least two hours, they feel healthy and active, but due to exams being held online, they feel no motivation or inspiration for studying as they'll be depending on copying from the book to score an exams, which will lead them nowhere. Online exams have more disadvantages than advantages. They make the student feel more confused and disturbed. As we are aware, the pandemic has changed several people's mindsets, positively and negatively. Online exams will, call, will cause unnecessary pressure and disturbance to students and the future. I would like to conclude by saying, do what is right, not what is easy. Students will benefit much more with offline exams than with online where there are more difficulties and not many solutions. Thank you. Now we have our fourth speaker. Uh, we have our fourth speaker from Team Lion, Imad Nas, who will be speaking on ease and advantages. Over to Imad Nas, the screen is yours. Yes, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Emma and I'm the speaker for, and I'm going to divide my speech into two advantages, to two part ease and advantages. So let's start with part A. So gone are the days where the students were only given the exam and studying in person. Now with the increase of popularity and ease of e-learning students no longer need to make journeys to their classroom and can easily find their class classrooms online we can have our examinations and classes online from any part of the world we don't need to travel or to schools covering long distances now let's discuss part b which are at one first it reduces the cost the cost for the examiner and the students who is giving the exam is reduced the cost of the paper and ink is reduced almost half of the traditional method. The transportation of cost reading the center and the students gets, gets eliminated too. Two, it improves time management skills. In online examination, the time more runs below, which reminds the student to complete the exam with the time bot. This helps the students in, in improving their time management skills. Three, immediate results. In most cases, the evaluation made online mode examination are performed by bots. In some examination, answers are already installed online. So as the time, re time plan reaches zero, the answer gets submitted and in just a blink of an eye, the results get displayed on the screen. Four, covering long distances. When a student wakes up and if he gets late to school, he has no worries if it's online examination. He could simply open his laptop, join his class, and open his camera and start his online exam without no, no issues. No, my purpose in focusing on the topic of speaker five of the opponent's side. All right, now I would like to hand over to the next speaker. Thank you. Now, our fourth speaker from Team Eagle is Mohammed, and he will be speaking on having negative impact on students' tactile skills. Over to Mohammed, the screen is yours. Good evening to all present here. 
the negative impact on students tactile skills or touch this is brain's ability to understand information coming from skin particularly from the skin of hands the hands are being used to take sensory information and then the brain uses the information to guide the hands during an activity this gets affected by the recent developments in technology i will be showing an example how it works in traditional cl classes we don't use gadgets we use only books pens and pencils which unknowingly improves our tactile skills this is how it works the pencil book have different structure and material which our sensory parts of hand passes the information to the brain not only but, but also it passes experience of brain which was done earlier which tells the hand how to do activities like reading and writing in online classes we use tablets laptops and other gadgets where everything is changed to online e books e notes e forms using such gadgets where everything is on screen our tactile skills starts to die function because we do all our work on screen health issues faced by children due to the function of tactile skills they may appear anxious aggressive unwilling to participate in home and school activities poor response to touch may hamper the activities of daily living body awareness and motor planning may be disturbed due to such problems not to be faced by students the schools should not be re redesigned to be online hence i strongly object to online examination thank you now the fifth speaker from team lion is talha rafi and he will be speaking on benefits of new normal over to talha rafi the screen is yours hello am i audible yes please go ahead so let me begin i am talha rafi and i am the speaker number 5 from the affirmative style and today i am going to speak about the new normal so what is new normal so i am going to divide my speech into three parts so part a will be explaining about what's new normal part b will be explaining you about what is it and how to uh, accept it and the part c the last most will be explain what are its advantages so let me begin part a is all about what are the uh, what is the new normal let me see the word new normal is something new normal everything which we apply in our normal life is normal but something we are implementing in our life which is new to us but becomes a uh, normal after implementing this is all new normal and new normal in our education has been common now because we have shifted from the traditional way to the hybrid uh, schooling system so this help us to develop ourselves and the other thing is that the pandemic last year has provided us an acceleration to the hybrid school model and to the synchronous and unsynchronous blended learning when something that is new to us it becomes normal one day we need to change ourselves and accept the new technology to make our life more easier so so in the par b is how to accept it this is about uh, fulfilling our requirements like examination is very important in the life of a child a student and a teacher because it helps them to make their greater futures so examination uh, is very important future careers are going to depend on technology for different ways so exam examination can help them build, uh, build their futures so how
So let me continue. Barbie is about how to accept it and it, uh, our requirements fulfill. Examination uh, are important in our lives. So technology integration in our online examination provides us a variety of ways to make it easier and to go on. Everyone learning differently. Everyone learns everything differently. And online education helps the teacher to understand every student and make different uh, evolving systems to every different uh, student and it helps them to develop their different futures, bright futures. Yeah, and now in the part C is all about the advantages. This helps the teachers are able to prep the students in different ways. Educators can use multiple choice questions, forums, short videos and elements to help the students better prepare for examination. Online examination can be fun because this is helpful for them to build their uh, future and even learn everything more easily. Now the generation is more attached to the education system. So online uh, technology help them to understand it more easily. Now, there are many apps and platforms for educators and teacher for uh, different uh, making their assignments, etc. And the last thing is that this helps the child to be, become self-disciplined and self-motivated. And this is how he can, uh, there are no distractions for him, no friends, etc. And he could focus only on studies and uh, be greater in his future. And I would like to hand over this to our next speaker. Thank you. And our final speaker is Mohammed Hafi from Team Eagle. And he will be speaking on cheating in exams. Over to Hafi, the screen is yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohammed Hafi, and I'm the fifth and final speaker for the opposition team. I strongly oppose online exams as it will cause unnecessary chaos. Exams are a way of assessing a student's knowledge and it lets teachers decide what the best course of action for the student is. But online exams completely defeats the purpose of exams for the following five major reasons. Contention one, cheating on online exams. Cheating on online exams is inevitable. Research has shown that 73% of students cheat on an online exam. As time goes on, people will find better ways to cheat, which makes, uh, which makes the exams useless. Contention two, challenges in technology adaptation. Not everyone has access to technology or the money to buy a computer, a good internet, and a decent camera. According to UNICEF, about 1.3 billion children are underprivileged. The underprivileged can barely afford to eat food, so how will they afford to buy such expensive items? That is not even taking into consideration the amount of people who have low bandwidth, uh, low bandwidth internet, which can completely sabotage their tests. By having online exams, we are creating a barrier between the privileged and the underprivileged. The underprivileged are already struggling for education. Online exams make, make it harder on them. At the moment, we just don't have the proper technology to be able to administer students taking tests at home without some major difficulty. Contention three, infrastructural barriers. One of the major disadvantages of on an online examination system surfaces in remote locations where access to electricity, stable internet connection, and other basic system requirements are difficult to meet. Such barriers impede online exams. Contention four, distractor and time management. Home isn't a place of studying and learning like school. There will be many people moving in and out and making noises at home. Students can and will get easily distracted and lose concentration on the exam. Either way, if the student isn't good at typing fast, that will take, uh, that will take from their time on a time test. Contention five, Answers that require drawing and other special answer types will be difficult. Drawing on computers isn't easy for most people. If questions required on the test contain diagrams, drawings, etc., there is a high probability that teachers won't be able to understand their drawings. Hence, for these reasons, 
Online exams are not a good method of testing academic readiness. Thank you. That brings to the end of our first segment, the debate speeches, uh, speeches round. Now, both teams will be sent to the breakout room for six minutes for preparing the questions. When the participants are in the breakout room, I would like to share this video of Maxell alumni, which was done before. Kids got talent. Thank you. Good morning, teacher. 
Good morning, student. Happy Children's Day. Thank you, teacher. Do you know what's special? No, no teacher. 40 number is celebrated as Ch Children's Day. Plus six, plus seven, plus six, plus seventy five, plus six, plus eight, plus sixty nine, plus three is equals to one eighty.
I request everyone who is on this immersive view to switch on their videos. Zahid, please switch on your video. Comes now comes the most important part of the program, the rebuttal session where both teams will debate face to face. Rules governing the rebuttal round. Two minutes will be given for the rebuttal round for each speaker of both teams. It will be based on one minute for asking the question and the other minute for answering the question asked. Note that you need to be quick in answering the questions. Let's start. From Team Lion, please ask question to Team Eagle. Your time is running. Please ask. I had a question for the for speaker number for the person who told about the traveling and how physical activities. I had a question that how do you accommodate students who need to travel long distances or to live in places with hard with harsh weather conditions? This question is for speaker number four. Actually, I did not speak about that. I spoke about tactile skills. Anyone else who can answer the question? Can you repeat your question? Uh, that how could you accommodate students who need to travel long distances or if they live in places with harsh weather conditions? Okay. Okay, so I okay, sorry. Oh mama, go ahead. No, you can continue. Okay. So for the harsh weather stuff, that aspect, we could um accommodate it by giving them another time to sit the exam until the weather, you know, can becomes tamer. Yeah. 
Yeah, now from Team Eagle, please ask question to Team Lion. Uh, speaker number two, this question, uh, as cheating is one of the major disadvantages of online exams, how are you gonna prevent that even with all the modern technology? Actually, there are software called as Metal Proto, which is uh, which is can which can detect your eyes and your body language. Mm -hmm. I also have another answer. So you can the answer another answer could be that you can record the session too while the student is giving the exam and before like submitting the answer they could see the recording of the session and see if they spot like doing this or that and find if they're cheating. Even I have a better answer for this. You can use a timer of just five seconds of answering. So this uh, doesn't give him a time to open a book or search on web. So this might be a better choice. You can use a timer for every each question. That's it. There has been a lot of cases where there are timers for questions and yet people have copied. And even if you have softwares that can uh, track your eyes, you still have a lot of risk of cheating. And uh, to, teachers cannot monitor all of them at once. You can think just five seconds uh, cannot allow a child to load the page and search everything on time for each question. And the questions can be also my twisty, which uh, need to be uh, typed in a simple way on internet. So it might be difficult for him to take a chance of cheating. Yes, but five seconds is not enough time for anyone to answer um, a question effectively. That is way too time and that is a lot of stress for the student. As uh, yeah. said, our, uh, said by our speaker from opponent's side, that children are stayed calm and uh, do not have stress of answering questions, but you can find a stress right here while answering the question in just a second. And this might help the teacher to find out who student can answer uh, it effectively, but who need to uh, cheat cannot hear. I have a question. Speaker number four told that we need to pay for uh, ink and paper, which is just for less amount. And then for Wi-Fi and electricity, which is for more amount. What do you say about that? Yes, about that also, some people are launching a project for the people who are poor, the third part party world, for the poor people and giving them iPad with good internet connection. And that internet connection is connected to satellite. So it will be easier for them to join online classes and do their exams. So they won't have any issues. Yeah, but how are they able to afford the technology? Uh, they're getting it for free. They're getting it for free? Yes, it's for the third party world, the poor people. Oh. So you're saying that you um, uh, um the company will be able to provide um, iPads that cost $300 for, uh, to 1.3 billion children? Yes, it's also held by UNICEF. I have a question for opponent side for Hafizullah. 
there can you give an evidence to prove that you said that uh, cheating in online exams is 73 percent can you give an evidence for that Yeah, um, that was said by a professor um, who conducted a, a, a survey. What, uh, what opinion you have from your side on this? Well, obviously, um, when children have the opportunity to cheat, they're gonna cheat. Their children, they don't have the um, proper mindset to know that cheating is bad for them. Do you children think can, uh, children can even cheat in offline classes? It's not compulsory for everyone to cheat in online. They can che also cheat in offline exams. But there is a lot of risk in online exams of cheating than in offline. There yeah, are there's, teachers that can monitor difficult. the students easily without any problems in offline. When teachers are in front of the students um, in a face-to-face -face environment, the students are intimidated and they um, have, and they're also being uh, constantly watched by the teacher. Whereas in a online situation, it's not as um, intimidating and the, and the teacher can't watch each and every single um, student. For that, we can use Google Forms in which we can give 30 seconds for every child to answer each question. So in that people cannot just copy paste because the answers will be long enough. And in offline exams, teacher may not only concentrate, can't concentrate on, on all the students. So there is kind of cheating in the offline classes too. But the students are intimidated because the teacher is sitting right in front of them. And when in online classes, students feel the teacher cannot monitor all students at once and they can easily cheat and switch off the camera. Yeah, and even, even if we put a timer, like 30 seconds per question, I don't think that's ideal either because, um, for example, some, some students may have difficulty in typing fast. And so how do you also take that into account? It doesn't have to do with their knowledge, it's just you know their ability to use the technology. They're not good at it. So how would you control for that? I have a question for opponent's side that the earth uh, changes and have evolution from time to time. It takes a lot of decades, but it will change through different situations. Now we have having a chance to evolve ourselves from book to screen. Please comment on that. Okay. Um, I'd the earth got a lot of time and we didn't get as much time. We still need more time for, um, for this change. We don't have the proper technology to be able to administer um, all of the students taking the exams. So we still, uh, uh, we as humans still need more time for this evolution. Uh, Actually, uh, invention is a mo uh, mother of necessity. So now it is a necessity because it's important for us. So what you can say about this? No, it's not a necessity. We have been doing face-to-face uh, -face learning for years. This isn't a necessity right now. We can, uh, this can wait for a good amount of uh, time. Yeah. Can I have a question from speaker number five of you? Um, how can we stay away from all distractors in online exam. Actually speaking about examination, we do not have distractions like uh, giving attendance because everything is noted by our teachers. Giving attendance and no friends which are distracting you and uh, disturbing from all sides. You choose a corner, any part of your home and you can give examination easily. It doesn't have to be your what? friends who are distracting uh, you. It could. Okay, sorry. Do you want to go what ahead? If, what about the siblings? Yeah, the siblings. Yeah, actually, everyone are mature of this new normal. 
so they understand and they try to keep themselves on their paths and let them continue their work silently. But if it's little siblings, like who are under five, age five and below, they, you know, they don't have this mature sense. They will just be running around um, the house and everything. So how do you control that? Actually, uh, nowadays, the house doesn't consist of one room, like a hut or something. We have different rooms, four or five rooms in our houses, big houses. So we can sit separately from uh, away from your siblings, etc. Like Not, how I am now. But are no, you I saying can, to lock speak. the little kids in their rooms? Like they could, you know, we can trap them in, in one room all day. A lot of like families it. have uh, money to afford bigger houses. And I can speak from experience. My, uh, my, uh, I have three siblings, and th um, all of the siblings are in a diff uh, completely different room. But I still get distracted from them when they're screaming and yelling at each other. Actually, I had a question for speaker number five of the opposition team. In online exam, parents tend to keep close eye on the children during online examination because of the fear of parents children do not copy um that is not true parents have many responsibilities no, not all par uh, parents can be able to um, monitor their children taking exams uh, um uh, uh, um all the time um, even my, my parents, my mom has to go go cook. My dad has to go do his office work. I'm in my room alone. No one can, uh, sees what I'm doing. I can easily cheat if I wanted to. Well, I have a now. Um, we will have one last uh, questions from both teams. Then it will be the end of the rebuttal session. I have a question for the affirmative team. To speaker number one, how will students living in developing countries who have unstable electricity? maintain power and good internet connection to take the test? Actually, uh, we have different places which are uh, now also set up and uh, we, they have a lot of computers and internet connections where people visit to that places and even can continue their work. How about for people who cannot afford fast internet connection and the siblings have their exams at the same time? and they can, there will be lagging, how are we going to prevent that? What about the power walls? The question from team opposition is over. Now only team affirmative. Please ask your last question from team affirmative. I have a question for the speaker number three about distractions. Like also in normal classes, we could get distracted by the speaking out the chairs and if a person is writing the sound of it and also when the teacher passes by that could be a distraction too so how can you pre prevent that many teachers during the exams the invigilators they prevent any noises uh, as from experience uh, when we were having an exams the teachers would always stay quiet and uh, the principal would announce uh, about how the environment should not be noisy. And if there is any noise, it will be stopped by the principal herself. There are not many distractions. There are not many distractions in online classes, in offline classes than in online. In online classes, we don't have any distractions because we will be locked in a room. We can just close our door. In offline classes, disturbance teacher coming and going out and children also go to that uh, for going go to the toilets or washroom they want to so we get disturbed but in online classes we can just close our door and we don't even get a bit of there are still noises that can pass through your door and teachers don't usually just roam around the classes when they're having exams and make noises and uh, as for students who want to step out of the class that it will just take a minute, but there will be continuous noises in your house, even if you close the door or the windows. Actually, I had a question. Students take an extra supplement and other students feel pressured about the paper. And Sorry for the inconvenience, but both teams have asked the last mm -hmm. questions, so you cannot go ahead. Now, 
I would like everyone to maintain silence and give our chief judge five minutes for announcing the best speaker and the best team. Please maintain silence. Thank you. Now, I would like our chief judge to please give the feedback about today's session and then announce the best speaker and the best team. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Lokman. That was a wonderful evening. First of all, a very good evening to one and all present here. It's really nice to see that how uh, you all are using your vacation time in such a productive manner. It's, it's, it's an amazing... Um, you know, experience. I've been associated to several debating communities back in India and in Qatar. So it's actually a pleasure to be part of this session today evening. First of all, let's, let me thank Team Maxil alumni. Thank you for having me in to judge this wonderful, wonderful session. I mean, I'm really happy to see all of you take over the time given to you and think over the topic. And the way you all presented was quite amazing. So let me congratulate all of you all for putting your best foot forward. So I think all of you all deserve a big round of applause. Okay. <clears throat> so Lukman, can we move ahead to the best speaker? Yes, please go ahead. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have a sore throat today. Yeah. So let me uh, 
tell that all of you all were pretty good. But then when we look at a good speaker, we look at overall performance, right? So out of all the students, it's, it's pretty close. If you see, there are many students who have gone very close to the best speaker. So let me announce it is none other than Hiba from Team Eagle. You deserve this best speaker position, particularly because of the ease with which you spoke. Uh, you were casual yet formal when it came to your speech. Casual in the sense, uh, I couldn't feel the stiffness in you. It was as if you were talking to me. It was as if you were communicating something to me. Many of you all were pretty close to that score, but then um, somebody has to win, right? So congratulations, Hiba, right? Um, yeah, so we all can give her a virtual clap. Right. Lukman, uh, should I announce the winning team? Yeah, ma'am. Right. Uh, can you give me one minute to just total up the score? Okay, ma'am. Lukman, just a question to you. Uh, shall I add the individual score and the average team score? No, ma'am. Overall, the performance of the team, only that is included in the average score of the right, speakers. Right, but I think the... each individual's contribution uh, makes a difference, right? So I think we'll get a fairer uh, uh, judgment if you add all of them up. Okay, ma'am. I Is think okay? we can. Okay, it's okay. Right? Because that's how we do it in Qatar debate. Am I am I allowed to do that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so are we all ready? Before I announce the winning team, let me tell you all children. Debate is more of a team event. So when one of our team member falls down due to whatever reason, if the others are able to pull him up or probably you know, compensate for uh, the loss, that's where we see team spirit, right? So the winning team over here has done that and they've done that with a lot of ease and poise, right? So uh, there's, there's a hairline difference between the winning team and the team which has uh, stood second. So I'm really, really glad and elated to announce Team Eagle as the winners. Congratulations, Team Eagle. Team Lion. You all have also put in your best foot forward. You will have also, I mean, you all were consistent. Okay. I could see the highs and lows in uh, Team Eagle. Somewhere I could see that, you know, they're pulling up. They're trying to uh, come up one above the other. But Team Lion, I could see that in you all as well. But then somewhere a 0.5 difference, right? So Team Eagle, congratulations. Team Lion. Better luck next time. Okay. Lukman, over to you. Thank you, ma'am, for giving your time to be with us. Congratulations to the best speaker and the best team. The certificates will be updated in the group soon. That brings to the end of today's program. Now we will be ending the session. Thank you for all being with us. Good night.